it's Cassie with Cassie's Parlor and today I'm going to make a wreath for outdoors using this wooden frame and white craft plastic, um, matte Duralar, sorry this way, matte Duralar and uh, wet media Duralar. Okay, so with these three things, I'm going to make a bunch of flowers and leaves and foliage for the wreath. And then the actual wreath is going to be made out of this frame. It's going to be a little different, a little funky, but I wanted something fun and different for my front door. So here we go. So the first step I need to do is to paint this frame because I don't want it to be natural wood. The natural wood is beautiful, but I just want it to be a little different. So I'm just going to use some white craft paint and I'm going to paint this whole entire frame. Okay, now that there's white paint everywhere and it's pretty well dry, I would like to also add some gold um, flakes, gilding flakes. Okay, so this is just a really nice gold. Let's get it open so you can see. You gotta be really careful with these because they really do like to go everywhere and they're very light. <laughs> I always get nervous when I'm opening these things up. They're, it's, if you've never worked with this, it's just like the, the lightest, most delicate foil sheets. Um, okay, I probably can use those, but I'm gonna put those aside for a minute. And so here we've just got some beautiful gold flakes, okay? So first thing I need to do, I've got some liquid glue here that is made for using with these um, with this gilding flakes, with these gilding flakes. So let me get this open. And honestly, I think I'm just going to put it here and there. And, um, and then I'm going to use a brush to, uh, move this glue around a little bit. I didn't put it everywhere. I definitely don't want the gold flakes everywhere, but you know, I do really love the gold flakes. <laughs> so I want it to be here and there. So I'm just using a brush I don't really care about because once you put glue or anything like that on a brush, it is really hard to get it out. So make sure you're not using a good brush for this process, okay? And then I'm just gonna let this glue sit for a minute it has set for, for a few minutes here. I'm just gonna start taking pieces of foil and tapping them down and moving it all around the frame. It's gonna take a few minutes to do, but it's totally worth it. I have this little sponge here and it's pretty squishy and has open pores. Um, that probably would work best, you know, or a light brush will work fine too, but you just wanna rub it so you get the excess off, okay? Mm, mm, mm. This is so pretty. Okay, so you're just rubbing across so the last step of this, I will have to take it outside to weather seal it because it's going to be on my front, um, on my front door. So um, I would just take it outside and spray this to weather seal it, and then this frame part will be done. Okay. So now we'll move on to building the flowers. Okay. So first, I've got a piece of white uh, opaque craft plastic from graphics and I am going to do two of these. I'm gonna do one with just a bunch of different greens and um, turquoise colors and then I'll do another one with pinks and orange and yellows. So then when I'm done with that and it dries, then I'll be cutting out the green one, I'll be cutting out some foliage and the other one will cut out some flowers. So I'm just gonna start with some acrylic paint and sprays and just kinda cover this thing and I don't really care um, I'm not looking <clears throat> at composition or style or anything like that. I really just care about the colors um, working together. So I've got some different acrylic paints. I had uh, some Amsterdam. I've got some Tim Holtz Distress paint. 
Okay, and let's see. I like a little bit of this salvage patina. It's a little bit lighter than that other turquoise. Okay, so I want mostly green, but a little bit of turquoisey blue is going to be really pretty also. So now I'm just going to use a brush and move this around. And sometimes when I do stuff like this, I like to do kind of a crosshatch because it gives me a little bit of like brush um, texture and it looks interesting. And so you notice I'm doing one color at a time, but I'm not going to wash my brush in between. I'm just going to go on to the next one. And that salvage patina is pretty close to that turquoise. It's a tiny bit lighter, but it's kind of blending together. So now, now I have the other green and this is just my first layer. Okay. I am going to go over this with other stuff, but really I'm just making a background. Basically I'm making my own pattern paper out of the opaque craft plastic. Uh, and you can do this on the white or the black and use it for lots of different kinds of projects. Um, I do this quite often. It's really fun and free and easy. Um, you could even do something like this and use it as background paper for journaling or card making, scrapbooking, whatever it is that you do. This is just a good general um, process to do. So now I've got an interesting background started. You can see kind of the texture from the brush, from the crosshatch. I didn't do a great crosshatch here, but it's fine. Just wanted a little bit of varied color, mostly pretty much cover up all of the white space because these are going to be cut out and used for foliage. Okay, so I'm going to dry this layer and then I'll, I'll put some other stuff on top of it. Okay, so this is pretty well dry. Ooh, I just love the way that looks. Uh, now I've got a couple of really green um, gloss sprays. I've got Evergreen and Fur from Dina Wakely. So I'm going to just try a little bit of this on top of it, giving it, giving it a good shake. Okay, I'm going to just try and spray lightly and see what I can get. It's a totally different green than what's under here. You know, it's more yellow green, but I think it's going to be interesting when it dries. Okay, and then I might just splatter a little bit too. I tried to spray lightly but sometimes that doesn't you don't have as much control you know so a little bit of splatter so cool and just think about if you're doing something like this like think just you know don't worry about right now it's a hot mess and it just looks kind of crazy but if you think about it like okay when I cut this up and I've got a bunch of leaves made out of this. It's going to be pretty cool. Do, I'm going to do the same thing here with the fur. And the reason I'm using this darker green is because this is really bright. Um, well, actually, it's pretty much mostly mid-tone, though. So I just want a little bit of contrast and brightness in here. And I'm just going to start by splattering instead of um, spraying. Because it is so contrasty. But I think... What do I want to do? I think I want a little bit more splatter, or slightly different. So I'm gonna get my brush and splatter. See, I have I get bigger drops this way. Oh yeah, that's perfect. This fur is a really nice mossy kind of green. So it's different in that way because this other green is a lot more, oh, I would say summery looking and you know, summer foliage and bright and more yellow and just bright. And this is a lot more mm, like muted and maybe even fall like and jungle and, you know, olivey, dirty green. Mm, that's pretty. Okay, so I like the contrast not only of the medium tone and dark tone, but also the different kinds of green that's going to give us more visual interest when we cut it up and make them into foliage. So I'm going to dry this layer and then we'll move on. Okay. So that is still kind of drying a little bit. I'm going to set it aside though, and I'm going to get another piece of um, opaque white craft plastic. And now I'm going to do the, the warm colors so that we can use some of this to cut out flowers out of. Okay. okay. And then again, same as the other one, when I'm doing something like this and getting started, I just really want to get some color all over the substrate and I don't particularly care 
you know, about um, how it looks or whatever. So I'm using picked raspberry, saltwater taffy, and I have some abandoned coral. I'm trying to keep it really nice and bright and happy. Okay, I think that's probably plenty of paint. So now I'm going to get a brush again. And uh, I think I'll start with the taffy and the abandoned coral and kind of work those two together because they're very similar in color. One's just a little bit lighter and more pinky than the, than the other. Just going to move this color around. I wanted a nice summery, peachy, pinky kind of color. I'm just putting color all over, making sure there's no white space and that I have some varied color. You know, for this, I, I definitely don't want it to all be one color. So the other one, I use some colors to go darker uh, with the spray, and this one I'm using a uh, color to go brighter. So, ooh, that's cool. I like that it's, oh, that's fun. I didn't even plan on that, but that is pretty cool. Okay, all right, I'm digging this. If you just press down a little bit, you get some Cool little drops. All right, I'm gonna let that be. I love this. This is awesome. Um, and then I also think I want to add a little bit more of this other pinky kind of color. And I'm gonna spray this one too. And let's see. Oh, it's a little darker. Okay. I just I'm trying to let it dribble out. Just a little bit here and there. I don't want too much because I really am liking that yellow. Okay, that's good. Okay, so we're gonna let this dry and work on another sheet. We're gonna have lots of flowers. So, um, so far we've just worked on the um, two white craft plastic sheets and done different colors. Now we're going to work on the matte Duralar and the wet media film and um, get some more different kinds of surfaces to use. Um, to make flowers. Okay, so first we've got the matte Duralar. If you haven't used this before, it almost is like a vellum, but it's so much more and better than that. This is going to be flowers also. Um, I do want to do a slightly different palette. I want to stick with the, the peaches and pinks and yellow kind of color, but I also want to add a little bit more drama to it. So these are going to be good for layering. Um, and so I'm probably going to do one with some lighter color and some with some darker color so that I can layer and really um, add some drama to it. Okay, so this first one I'm going to do, um, let's see, what if I do lemon and blushing? I think I'm going to do just yellow and pink together. Okay, so first we'll go with the yellow. I'm just spraying all over. And, you know, this is matte Duralar, so it can take lots of different um, types of materials on it, like paints and sprays and um, all sorts of stuff. So don't be afraid. Try all of your things on here. You can even use like art crayons and colored pencils and markers and all sorts of stuff. So look at, oh, look at the, the bubbles and dots that are forming. So this one, this layer, I do want to keep pretty light because um, it's going to be like either an over or under layer, okay? Because I wanna make flowers with a couple layers to them. And, um, ooh, this is gonna be amazing. What if I throw a little gold in here too? I've got some gilt. Look at that gold. Oh, it's so, 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 so gorgeous. All right, okay. I'm just adding gold here and there. Just some splatter of it. I think when it dries, it's gonna be pretty spectacular. And it's gonna tie back to the gold from the the frame. Okay, so it's kind of hard to see now. I know it just looks like a crazy mess, but I'm gonna let this sit and dry on its own. Okay, now this one, this is the um, matte Duralar again. Okay, I just wanna have a lot of choices um, so that I can cut lots of flowers out to make my frame, or my wreath, sorry. I keep saying frame, because it is a frame, but I'm making it into a wreath. <laughs> so, okay. This time though, I think I wanna go darker colors. So I am gonna use Sedona, which is like a deep orange. Okay, so I'm gonna spray some of this. I haven't actually used this yet, let's see. Oh yeah, this is amazing. 
And I'm spraying a little bit more just because I want this to be the main color on this sheet. Mm, so pretty. Yeah, that's perfect. That's just like a burnt orangey kind of color that I was hoping for. And what if I do that with a little bit of the lemon also? Let's just see what that looks like. Yeah. Yeah, I do like to mix it up and have a couple colors. Oh, I love when you mix them, how they react together. They interact with each other. It's interesting. Remember, it doesn't really matter what it looks like either. It's all getting cut up. Okay. All right. I say okay, and then I keep going. <laughs> Ooh, that's really cool. Okay, okay so now I'm going to use the wet media Duralar, which is clear. Um, let me get a piece out here. I can show you. I'm going to leave this. Um, it's got like a tissue backing in between each sheet. It's helpful for me to be able to know where the piece of paper is, or the plastic paper, you know, the uh, wet media journal, or where it is, because it's just, it's clear, so it's so hard to see otherwise. So, so I'm going to go with my two greens, and let's start with the lighter one. And I'm just going to spray. Wet Media Duralar takes, um, just like the mat, really, you can use so many different things on it. Um, it takes sprays and paints and um, all the things. You can, you can use all different uh, materials on this. So, all right, just going to put little splatters here and there. Trying to let it splatter out a little bit and not be so spotty. I might actually put a little water on this one we haven't done that yet just to let it kind of blend a little and be less spotty and be a little bit more um oh yeah the drips are good sorry i'm going into the camera here um yeah this is gonna be awesome look at that oh my gosh it's so cool yep just looking for like different textures different style for each of the layers so okay so i i have this uh these templates and dies for um cutting out this particular type of flower it's a crocus uh, i'm going to cut out a couple of these out of this um this is the opaque craft plastic <clears throat> so that first piece we did that has the acrylic paint and the spray on it so i'm just going to start right in the corner i want to use as much of this as i possibly can so I'm going to draw these and then cut them out. Um, I do want to have a few different kinds of flowers on here, so I'm not going to do all of this type of flower, but I do want to do a couple of them. So I'm doing the, the largest and then the medium um, petal, and then these will layer up in between. Let's try this pencil. Yeah, pencil's perfect. Here we go. Okay, so I'm just tracing around all of them. So I'm just going to do this and cut them out and die cut some with the machine here. And then we will get to assembling. Okay, so these have had a bit of time to dry. Now this is the wet media Duralar, as you can see, because it's clear. Um, and this has the green paint on it. And look at how cool that looks. This like. is the one that had the Sedona and the yellow. And this is the um, the matte Duralar. So I just want to show you like how it dried. And then this was the pink and yellow, and it uh, it combined and turned orange. So that's interesting and cool. I mean, it's all going to work great together. Yeah. So here so. are the white opaque craft plastic flowers that I've cut out so far. I have some big and some medium size. Um, petals and then they're just going to layer up. We're going to shape them and stuff. They're going to layer up and be three-dimensional and I'm going to put more layers on top. And then this is another shape um, that I've also cut out of the opaque craft plastic. So I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to be die cutting and cutting out flowers out of these two and then I'm going to cut out more foliage out of this and then we will start assembling. Okay, so I've cut out a ton of flowers and leaves out of all the different graphics materials. The next step I need to do uh, is build these flowers. Okay, so I'm gonna walk you through how I'm building these flowers, and then I will build all of them, and then we will put them on the wreath and be done. Right. I'm gonna build um, a flower here and show you kind of how I'm doing it, and then I'll make all the flowers, and then we will assemble, okay? 
So for this next step, I have this, I think this was the crocus. So it's in three sizes. Let me make sure I have the right sizes here. And for these ones, I have folded um, each of the petals in, and then I just took them at the center. Each center has kind of a point, and I just folded them in half so that they would um, just have a little bit more dimension to them. And so, and, and look, because it's the graphics, um, this is the matte Duralar, but because it is, it's holding its shape, you know, without really any work. So that's pretty amazing. Another great reason to use this. So I'm also alternating. So as you can see, I've got some of the white craft plastic and some of the matte Duralar. It's really fun to mix up the types of materials you're using instead of just doing all of the same, which would be beautiful. You definitely could do that. But mixing them up really kind of adds another extra bit of interest to it. If I show you this one that's completed, you can see I've got that pink, the white opaque in the middle, and then I've got the matte Duralar on the top and the bottom, and it just gives it a little bit more um, difference and interest and kind of contrast. So I'm going to do that. So I'm, I like to get all three pieces. Let me put those out of the way here. So I've got that, I've got the middle, and then I'll get a smaller piece. Looks like I even have four sizes here. Okay, so then I'm gonna get this. Ooh, look at this one, it's got that really nice deep Sedona. That's gorgeous. And when you're layering these up, you just wanna make sure you obviously don't want them to be the same because you'll have all those gaps. So you just wanna rotate so that the petals are um, up like, filling in the gaps in between and are opposite each other okay and then this guy's going to go in the middle there and i could leave it like that but i think i also have one smaller is this smaller yes i could do four layers Ooh, four layers on this one i might do four layers on this one just to try it out i think that looks super pretty so then i'm just going to start from the back and I'm gonna lay this flat and put a piece, uh, a little bit of hot glue. Um, I'm using high temp hot glue. This uh, graphics matte Duralar can definitely take it. And so I use hot glue because it's faster and it's like sticking right now and it's definitely not gonna go anywhere. And I like to do it on the base and then stick the um, pedal to it. It just, for me, it works better. So this way I can take a minute Make sure I'm lining it up the way I want. All right. And then sticking that down. And then we'll do one more on this one. The last one I just had three layers, but you can do as many layers you want. You could do like 10 layers. I think that would be really cool um, for some of these flowers. So here we go. So we're just going to stick this down. Now we're going to give it a minute to dry. Look at how pretty that is. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Okay, so this is pretty much dry and ready to go, but you need to put something in the middle here. You could put um, some sequins or a jewel or some glitter or um, like a rhinestone, like a sticky back rhinestone or whatever. I would still hot glue it. I am using prills. I like to make my own flowers out of lots of different materials. And um, these prills work, work really well for that. This particular one is called Aquanet and it's just this nice turquoisey kind of color, but it come, they come in lots of different colors. I also have this yellow one here, but for again. this, instead of using hot glue, you can use any kind of craft glue. I'm also, I'm using collage medium, um, but you could definitely use I would say like any kind of wet, um, wet craft glue will work, but I'm just, I just put a little bit right in the middle here. And then I, I normally have a little spoon that I scoop this out, but I don't have it with me right now. So I'm just using, you can just dump it in or you can like scoop it out with whatever you've got. You just want a few. Okay. These pearls last a long time too, and they're so fun and pretty. And uh, I love that they come in lots of different colors. It just helps to finish. You could also put a hole through this and pull stamens through and put actual like, um, you know, those fake flower stamens. That would be really pretty. So I, um, I put the collage medium down first and then I add my prills 
and then I put a little bit more on top because that is just going to make sure that when this dries, none of those little dots are going anywhere. It just really cements it into place. So you definitely have to let it sit aside and dry. But um, I did that with these, okay? And you can see it's it's like really in there good. And it dries nice and clear and it, you just have a really beautiful center for your flower. Okay, so I'm gonna do that same process for all of these flowers. Um, some of these really small ones, I might leave single or, you know, <coughs> excuse me, or maybe even do a double. But I think most of them I'll leave single, even maybe even this size, because um, I want to be able to um, just fill in gaps with them here and there once I'm building the wreath. So that's why I have all these little guys. Okay, so I'm going to build the rest of these flowers and then we will start to assemble the actual wreath. Okay, so I actually, I when I was looking at the frame, I decided I wanted something kind of hanging off the edge. I thought that would be really cool. And I found this... Um, it's plastic, you know, it's fake foliage kind of stuff. So, but it hangs really nicely and I think it'll look cool, but I really want the color to kind of go with the rest of the colors of the foliage and the flowers and everything. And I felt like this green wasn't quite there and it looks kind of plastic, which is fine. But I also kind of just want to stylize it a little bit more for what we're doing. So I'm going to take my two colors of gloss spray that I have from... Dina Weekly that I, that I used to make the other leaves and I'm just going to spray this and let it dry and then um, you know and I don't mind if it covers everywhere I just want to give it more of that like artist painterly you know kind of style that I've got going on with the rest of it so I'm going to spray this and then I'll put it aside to dry Okay, I like it already. It definitely didn't cover completely, but there's like splotches of it everywhere and that's exactly what I wanted. So I'm gonna put this whole thing aside to dry and then we'll see how it looks when it's drying. Okay, so I cut this out of this piece. Um, I just sort of like freehanded the shape and then I started cutting and then I ended up cutting like not exactly where I even drew because it just felt better to me. This is a very wonky, branch with leaves on it, but I really love it. I love that it's got that artisty, you know, um, just kind of messy look to it. It even has some of the lines from where I was drawing, which I, I love. I think it looks great. So, but I wanted to have two of them so they could kind of drape with that other thing we just sprayed. So I drew another one on here. I used a Sharpie because it just works better. But again, see how loose and just really kind of crazy it is. When I cut it out now, I'm going to be cutting inside the line a little bit, but I actually don't even mind if the lines show through. I might even add lines because I like the way that that turned out. And then with the extra that's left over, I'm going to use um, this die that this die shape that I use to cut these out of the opaque craft plastic. I'm just going to line them up and cut around it just to get some extra, you know, um, leaves like this that are that are translucent that have this darker color we can layer them they're going to look really cool when we put them all together in the final layout so i just really want a lot of variation a lot of different you know i love using all these different surfaces to make um all these different like opacities of layers and colors and all that stuff so hopefully this all comes together <laughs> the way it is in my head. We will see. But right now I'm just going to cut out this piece. And I'm just using scissors and just hand cutting it. No big deal. And honestly, the wonkier the better in my opinion. I think it just adds the right amount of just my style, you know. And that's what this is all about anyway. Just creating a fun piece that is very uniquely you. You know, if you want to try this and do something like this, remember, you can use whatever colors work for your house or for your style. If you're going to make a wreath for your door, you know, maybe think about the colors, the color that your door is and what might pop or, um, you know, look good for you. Some people like more muted. Some people like more... Um, you know, bright colors like that. So really you get to just make this exactly what you want. And you are the only person that's going to have it, which I think is also pretty cool. I like when I get to make unique things for my house, um, you know, or for friends or family to enjoy that 
really nobody else is going to have. So Okay, so everything is dry. Everything is cut. Everything is built. <sighs> I'm so excited. It's taken us a, a bit to get here, but it really is going to be worth it. Look at, doesn't this just make you happy? <laughs> I love looking at all these pretty delicate flowers, but the thing is they look delicate, but they are so sturdy. They are not going to fall apart or anything because they're made with the graphics plastic. Same thing with the leaves here. Um, uh, this piece is dry, just got a little bit of splatter on it, which I love. And then I ended up cutting um, a couple pieces here. So these are really cool, just long dangly type foliage that I want to hang over the edge. I think that looks pretty cool. Oops, that's a scrap. And then this is a scrap, but I thought it looked kind of like a cool, like thin dangly piece. So we're going to try that. I just want to have a bunch of choices. You know, I might not even use all of this, but it's nice to have. And then I did use the excess to make some leaves. I mean, look at this leaf. Look at how cool that is. So these are just going to layer with the other individual leaves. So I'm going to put all of this off to the side here. All right. And then I'm going to bring in the frame that is going to be the wreath. Now, this is a rectangular frame. I think it will look cool if it gets to hang like at an angle. So this corner up here is gonna, it's gonna hang from here. So it'll kind of be angled. And, and you'll see in the pictures at the end, I'll take pictures of it actually on my door when this is complete so that um, you can see how it actually looks. Uh, when it's done. So I'm going to be working down in this corner because this is the part that's opposite that other corner that I am um, that I'm going to hang it from. Okay and I'm also going to be using hot glue here um, to stick everything on because it's just going to work fast and it's going to help it stick and stay for a long time. Okay so first thing I think I'm going to start with the, some of the flowers. So I have a few big flowers. We definitely want to do the big flowers first so that they can be the, you know they're going to be the focal point and then everything else will kind of build around it. So I want to see how many big flowers do I have. Again I don't have to use all of them. I have a lot of big flowers. This is probably going to be the main focal point and then I'll have other, I think I want three big-ish flowers. So maybe one like this and two of the other style, like this maybe. And then we'll have the dangly things going down this way. Okay, so that's how, where I'm gonna start. And honestly, um, it's really hard to um, like hold them in place and try to figure out where stuff's gonna go. So I'm just gonna start sticking. And truly, usually for me, um, the best way to just do something like this is just to get started and just to do it. So definitely also using the hot glue is going to make this process a lot better. Um, let's see. Putting a generous amount because I really want to make sure this sticks where it's supposed to and doesn't move. Oh, I'm so in love already. This is so fun. I hope that you're enjoying this as much as I am. Okay, this guy's gonna go over here. So after these three flowers, I think I will do the foliage underneath just to get that part done um, because then I'm just gonna be filling in the blanks and I wanna make sure um, that I have a space to put those. So let's see if I can prop this up a little bit and kind of want to play with this. It would definitely have to stick underneath. I think that looks so cool. But I also really, really love my pieces that I made. So I want to try both and see, do we need both? Do we just do one? Do we use the one that I made? That's what I'm figuring out right now. I think I need two going down. Oops. Okay, so like like this, one a little bit higher than the other, so they're not, yeah, that looks so, I kind of like that better. What do you think? And then maybe this thinner one can go up the other way. 
I definitely like the thinner one going up the other way. I'm going to glue that one down, which you might, it's sort of off camera, sorry about that, but I want to make sure that gets stuck. And I'm going to stick it a little bit near the top, just so it's not flopping, because it's a little delicate. I'm going to show you what I did here. I stuck it right here and down here, so it still can move, but it's not going to flop right over the edge, okay? I think I'm going to go with these. We're just going to go with these and see where it takes me. Um, and I might not use that plastic one I made, but I can still use it somewhere else, so it's not, a, it's not wasted or anything. Okay, I'm going to lay this flat, and I think I'm just going to stick some glue underneath here do one at a time take my time a little bit here okay I think I need it to be propped up again yeah I really like this oh I'm so excited if you're working with hot glue definitely be careful don't burn yourself okay I can use that other flower but I don't want it to stick down there we go okay and then this one is going to be pointing down but kind of up a little bit so they so it's kind of stacked you know what I mean that's gonna be so pretty I'm so excited okay so this one is gonna go like behind this flower there we go that glue is dripping down oh there we go that's a good spot for it okay so yeah you just if you if you're doing something like this you just sort of have to play okay I think that looks amazing all right, so now I'm gonna lay this back flat and I'm just gonna fill in some medium flowers up here to cover some of that and then some other little flowers here and a bunch of foliage all around. And then that really is it. This is the last part it's and you know, the placement of everything is pretty quick. So I'm just going to start sticking. So I think I'm all done. I'm gonna show you some up close here. So you can see, and I even put, you know, a couple little of the extra smaller flowers going outside of the spray just to sort of finish it off. But look at those prills in there. I mean, this is all made out of graphics matte Duralar, uh, wet media Duralar and opaque craft plastic and just some art sprays and paint. I mean, look at what you can do with just a little bit of supplies. I really do love the way this turned out as well. Okay, so I'm gonna go hang this on the door and take some photos, and then I will uh, post that at the end of this video. I really hope you loved uh, watching this project. I hope that you go and make your own wreath, even if it's not in this frame sort of way, um, just using these flowers and making them, even if you use them in an art journal, like I said, or cards or whatever. I mean, look at, I've got extra left over just because I was having so much fun making them. I made way too many things. So I'm definitely going to have to make something else out of these extras. But this was really, really fun. You can touch it up in any kind of way that is, you know, uh, specific for you. And know that this is going to be great on my front door because I used the graphics, craft plastic, uh, and um, Duralar products, which which will hold up. So thank you so much for hanging out and for watching this project. And I hope that it found, you found some inspiration here. If you want to learn more about graphics products, please go to graphicarts.com. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.